ladies and gentlemen, to an all-new reaction and review. Tonight, guys, I'm taking a look at a horror movie from 2003. That movie is sick. Serial Insane Clown Killer. No, guys, that actually is the title, Sick, and then it tells us that Sick is an acronym for Serial Insane Clown Killer. I am not joking. Now, I don't know if that title means that it's a killer who's dressed as a clown, thus he is a clown killer, or if he is a clown killer, meaning he's someone who has a huge hatred for circus folk and wants to take it out on the clown population. I don't know. I have no earthly clue. I've heard a lot of bad things about about this movie, and the fact that the invoice that, that came with it shows me that when the person bought it off of the wish list, they only spent 60 cents on it, that tells me that this thing's probably not going to be that good. But I'm still curious, because I've always been fascinated with horror with, with horror movies involving clowns, and they sometimes turn out really good, like Stitches and Killer Clowns from, from Outer Space, and sometimes they turn out like shit, like dead fucking clowns. Um, anyway, uh, and also, of course, then there's the ultimate horror movie about clowns, which was Stephen King's It, but uh, that's kind of sort of in a league all, you know, its own. I don't know where on the clown horror spectrum this fucker's going to land on. The only way I'm going to find out is if I shut up and I push play, and I'm going to do that right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Sick Serial Insane Clown Killer. Well, guys, I am able to say one thing. This is po this is quite possibly one of the cheapest looking movies I have ever seen. The camera here looks even cheaper than mine. Uh, the sound the sound fucking mix is awful. The dubbing here sounds terrible. Yes, guys, they have had to loop in a lot of dialogue so far. I am hoping for the writing to get to get you know slightly better. I mean, you know, especially since it's still pretty early. But, right now, guys, everything kind of seems to be just a massive collection of misfires. You know what I mean? Alright, guys, we are now 25 minutes in, and we still haven't had any real killings outside of the, like, outside of, like, the, like, prologue killing, and that one kind of sucked. Normally, guys, with uh, these sorts of slasher movies, we usually have a small body count of at least two or three people within the first half hour. The pacing on this thing is kind of shit. However, considering the fact that thus far everything else has been sort of bad, I guess I really shouldn't be. I guess I shouldn't be expecting better, huh? Seriously, guys, at this point, I really want this entire cast to just get killed off. I've yet to find a single likable, likable character. The ones who aren't incredibly whiny or incredibly stupid or ridiculously slutty have no, have no real, have no real personality. And whatever the hell's been stalking them in the woods, be it a, be it a fucking clown or something else, I want it to come up and just kill them all. And judging from the screams we're hearing in the woods, we may, we may be one step closer to seeing that. Well, guys, plus side is that at least now one of my questions is answered. The title refers to a killer who's dressed as a clown, not someone who kills clowns. At least now that much has been firmly, firmly, you know, established. I kind of wish that we could get something good out of this clown, you know, killer, but I strongly doubt it. Thank fucking God our clown has finally killed his first, you know, victim. Took only an hour in this 90 minute movie for this clown to finally kill his captive. The person he's had hostage for probably about, what, like the last like 20 minutes? Maybe even 30 minutes? Good God, guys, I was waiting for something interesting to happen. And that should have by all rights been cool, but it was still kind of shit. God damn it. I really was hoping, guys, for this movie to at least be kind of interesting, but no, it really isn't. Did you really just ask if he's fucking dead? He has a giant fuck-off axe jutting out of his back. I really don't think you can fucking survive that, woman. 
Well, guys, that was sick. Serial insane clown killer. Let me shut this turd off. Jesus. God almighty. All right. All right. Let's start with the writing. Let's talk about the writing in this thing. Um, I mentioned earlier our characters are all incredibly shit. The ones who the ones who aren't incredibly whiny and irritating are 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 ridiculously slutty or uh, weird, and the ones who don't have any of those personality traits have no personality at all. And, guys, I totally understand, you know, horror film, a slasher flick, at least it was trying to promote itself as a as a slasher flick. It's kind of hard to say that you are when your body counts only about three people, but let's not fucking dive into that. Um, you know, I understand that in those sorts of films, personality is not necessary. However, or, 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 or well, it's not very necessary, but it is still kind of a needed thing. You need to have some level of personality in order to make your characters, you know, likable in any fucking way. And when you don't have that, when you don't have characters who are worth who are worth worrying about or worth thinking about, all of a sudden, guys, the whole film becomes becomes a tiresome waste. It becomes a massive bore. And by the time the movie is done, you are just so happy to see closing credits that you kind of wish you never bothered with. That is really how bad the writing is in general, and most of it comes from, from the fact that our characters are that shitty. If Now, if the writers had taken even a couple of minutes to just try to flesh out these, these characters so that way we would care when they start vanishing, we would care when the few of them who die are killed off, we would genuinely give a shit. But... The writers didn't didn't bother to do that, and instead decided to hit on every single cliche and trope that comes with a movie about a bunch of people spending a weekend in a cabin in the woods being stalked by a killer, which means which means that which means that their cell phones do not fucking work, and the phone line has has been cut and the car has been tampered with and the only person who has who has a fucking cb radio within the area is the killer fucking with them it's all it's all tired worn out bullshit and i haven't seen this kind of tired worn out bullshit done this badly since i suffered through the cabin in the woods so um yeah this movie failed at everything. It failed to be interesting. It failed to be tense. It failed to give us interesting characters. It failed to give us a reason to care about anything going on here. And uh, all of that alone, all of that by itself would make this movie a torturous waste. But guys, that that right there is just the tip of the fucking iceberg here. Because everything else in this movie is a massive failure, too. Our acting sucks because none of these people apparently have ever taken acting lessons. I totally understand when you are given a bad script that you are not going to put a lot of effort in. However, I still have to stress, if you know how to act and if you care in just the slightest about, about, about your fucking craft, you will put some minimal amount of effort in and nobody fucking did. This is some of the worst acting I have seen in a long time. And if any of these human beings ever sets foot in front of another fucking camera, it is going to be the death of another film. No one here knows how knows how to act, and I fear that their very presence in a film will slowly kill that film. Now, besides the awful acting, by the way, I cannot think, I can't think of a single person who turned in a halfway decent showing. In fact, our main character, Brandon, probably turns in the worst uh, because he... Because he, for most of the film, is trying to play all happy and smarmy and smug, and he does that by hamming up his, his fucking lines and speaking in broken sentences. And when I say that, I mean that he will break off his sentences halfway and then start them up again as if, as if, that sentence had previously ended. So he basically will talk as if his sentences 
are all like multiple sentences long. I kind of sort of tried it there, but I don't have the talent to, 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 to give you a pure example of how shitty his fucking acting is. Now, thankfully, if you guys really want to suffer through all of this, some stupid schmuck has put this thing on on YouTube, and if you want to piss away 96 minutes, you go right ahead. However, though, by the time I'm done talking here, you're probably not going to want to bother watching this. So not only do we have the awful acting, the awful acting is made even worse by the fact that our sound mix is crap. And when I say that, I'm talking about looping in dialogue. I'm talking about looping in and dubbing in dialogue when 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 the camera couldn't fucking pick it up the first time through. And uh, this is especially noticeable, again, with the actor playing playing Brandon. I'm going to use the term actor as loosely as I possibly fucking can. Because apparently, because apparently when the mic is able to pick him up, he gives a lifeless, wooden, shitty showing. And when he's asked to loop in dialogue, it somehow gets worse. And also the very fact that they couldn't and also the fact that they couldn't mix his fucking dialogue in and make it actually sound like it was naturally a part of the shot makes the whole thing even worse. The sound mix in this thing is a fucking joke, but I can still say that it that it isn't the worst sound sound mix I have heard in a movie. That that dubious honor will probably forever stay with will probably forever stay with Birdemic Shock and Terror. But still, this is a bad mix. It's a shitty mix. So, we have terrible acting. We have a horrible sound mix. By the way, speaking also of sound mix, it would be nice if if we would have more, if we would have a bit more consistency when it comes to whether or not we can hear sound effects in shots. Because when, because when we have shots of a car driving, and then we cut to the shot of a small dog standing, standing in somebody's driveway, barking at the camera, and we can hear, and, and we can hear the car just fine, but the shots of the dog are completely fucking muted, it looks terrible. It seriously just sort of cheapens a movie which all fucking ready looks as if it was maybe made on like a $15,000 budget. This movie is garbage no matter how you fucking slice it. Now, camera work. I'm gonna fucking harp on camera because, guys, there's one thing I have, I have seen done at least moderately well, and that's movies shot on video or shot with video cameras. One of the best examples I can give is the is the trauma classic Redneck Zombies. If you want to see how good a movie can look when it's shot on video, go watch Redneck Zombies. That thing is perfect. This fucking thing, however, we not only have a pic we, we not only have picture picture quality which is fuzzy as hell, we also have severe cases of ghosting, which tells me that which tells me that this that that this DVD was probably taken off of off of a multi generational VHS copy of the movie that which would totally explain why every single every single shot is as blurry as shit. At least that would have been my theory if not for one fucking cutaway. One cutaway completely completely kills that entire theory because at one point. We have one character screaming so loud, I believe it was Mark, he screams so loud as he is looking for his wife. We then cut to a shot of two deer startled by his scream. And that shot of those two deer is the clearest, crispest shot. It has the clearest, sharpest picture in the entire movie. It pulls you right out before diving you right back into VHS mediocrity horseshit. So yeah, so that means, guys, that they that they must have been using the shittiest camera known to man when they were filming this, which would explain why every single shot actually filmed by the filmmakers is blurry and is loaded with fucking ghosting and motion blur and tons of other problems that no fucking camera should have in a movie made in 2003. Okay, I would probably have had no problem with that. If this thing was shot on video in like 1986, and I'm going to tell you right now, damn near every prop, damn near every car looks as if it came from 1986. The fact that this goddamn thing was made in 2003, that means that that means that we shouldn't have had any 
of the fuzziness, the ghosting, or the motion blur. This movie is borderline unwatchable because the picture quality is that fucking bad. Mind you, this thing is also the, this is the commercial DVD. Which means that whichever company put out put out this smoking turd, I think it was uh, I think it was uh, Artisan, could have at any time have tried to digitally fix this thing, digitally cleaned it up, and tried to and tried to get rid of the ghosting and tried to fix at least a little bit of the motion blur digitally, and they fucking didn't because they are lazy pieces of shit, and this thing was a bargain bin title, but yet still that horribly, horribly reflects on the company that put it out because they took no steps to make this thing look even halfway presentable. And that is disgusting. So not only do we have terrible writing, horrible acting, a disgusting mix, we also have picture quality that is borderline unwatchable because it is so fuzzy, there is so much blur, there's so much ghosting. I never thought, guys, I would have to bitch this much about picture quality in a fucking movie, but this thing is unwatchable. It's that fucking bad. It is nothing short of a miracle. I got, I, I, I got through the whole thing because, God damn it, I didn't want to continue. In fact, the very thought of all of those blurry fucking textures is starting to give me a fucking headache. Guys, this movie is not good. There is not a single positive I can garner on it. In fact, guys, I used to think that the worst movie involving evil clowns I would ever see was Dead Clowns. No, sick, serial insane clown killer has just drilled far, far, far below dead fucking clowns. This is the worst clown-themed horror movie I think I will ever fucking see. This thing is a piece of shit, and god damn it, I am never watching it again. Now, sick serial insane clown killer came off the Amazon wish list. The person who spent the 60 cents to get it here was Robert. And as always, Robert doesn't does not want me to give out his YouTube channel or anything and that's totally cool. Robert, you know what, dude? Thank you. I was really curious if this movie was going to be any good at all and it wasn't. And I really should not, and I really should not have, I should not have expected better. Because I had family members who rented this thing years and years ago warn me that it was a piece of shit. And I opted to write it off because those were people who normally aren't into horror, who aren't into horror, horror movies. But no, they were totally right. This movie is a piece, is a piece of garbage. And before anyone asks, no, I'm not sure if this thing is going to make it onto the bottom five. As terrible as this thing the, the bottom five for this year, because as terrible as this thing was on every fucking level, I do, I do seriously think that there, that, that I have seen vastly worse this year, but this movie is still unwatchably bad, and I would not wish it on anybody, and once more, Robert, I thank you for sending it. Now, I need to cleanse my palate. I need to go watch something with clowns in it that was halfway decent. I think I'm going to go and re-watch Stitches. So yes, guys, with that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.